This forum takes place during the 45th anniversary of National Small Business Week. The occasion reminds us of the important role that entrepreneurs play, employing half of the private sector workforce and creating almost 80% of all new jobs. Small businesses are also the country's primary source of innovation and drivers of advances in virtually every industry. It is not exaggeration that small firms are the lifeblood of the American economy. That is important to keep in mind given challenges we are facing today. The subprime mortgage crisis continues and oil prices are climbing to record highs. Unemployment is rising and our place as leaders of the global marketplace appears in peril. But small businesses can help us get things back on track if they have the right tools. That is why today's hearing is so timely. It will explore how, the best help, how to best help entrepreneurs continue their role in stimulating the American economy. We will do so with an eye towards addressing current economic realities and look for solutions that lead to sustained economic growth. Joining us are witnesses from an array of cutting edge industries. Their insights into the challenges facing the economy will be added to our discussion of these issues. They will also help explore how current challenges can be overcome through responsible policy and strategic partnerships that are rooted in the work of American small firms. As a nation, we can find a path from this economic downturn to recovery and growth. Small businesses have already proven that they are very good at leading the way. In fact, throughout history, entrepreneurial activity has been a principal reason our economy has regained its strength. Many businesses begin during economic slowdowns, creating jobs, products, and services. Take the last major recession as an example. During the early 1990s, self-employment, a core piece of the country's small business sector, was at an all-time high, 7.7%. Moreover, some 25% of downsized managers over the age of 40 choose to start their own companies during this time. Most of their firms endured as successful modern enterprises. Others fear, fared even better and have given birth to companies such as those on today's panel. Finally, it is not secret that during the late 20th century, technology was a key force in jump-starting and expanding economic activity. It remains so today. That was evidence in the SBIR, STTR reauthorization we approved in the House yesterday with overwhelming bipartisan support. It is also clear in the development and construction of energy efficient homes, as well as the marketing, tracking and shipment of small business products around the globe. Small businesses are leveraging the power of high tech tools. These entrepreneurs are harnessing real time communication, market mapping, software, and on-demand inventory systems. They are extending the reach of the internet and bridging the path to platform independence. With each step, they revitalize our economy and build the market leading America of tomorrow. This committee has always supported such efforts at a time when small businesses and our nation as a whole face daunting obstacles, we will redouble our work to advance policies that will help entrepreneurs thrive in the markets of the 21st century. I thank each of the witnesses for joining us today in celebrating Small Business Week and in discussing these important issues. I'm looking forward to your testimony. With that, I yield to Ranking Member Shabbat for his opening statement. Madam Chairwoman, thank you for holding this hearing, examining the role of small businesses in stimulating our nation's economy. I'd also like to thank our impressive panel of witnesses here this morning. We're looking forward to hearing your testimony, and a special welcome to Mark Steger, uh, who's from Cincinnati, Ohio, one of the distinguished members of the panel here, and I happen to represent Cincinnati, so we're particularly pleased to have, have him here. Um, it's uh, fitting that we are holding this hearing during Small Business Week as we recognize the contributions of America's small business owners and workers. 
These are the men and women who use their entrepreneurial talents to help improve our lives, sustain our economy, and expand opportunities for all of us, all Americans. There is no doubt that small businesses drive America's economy, creating about 70 percent of the new jobs and accounting for more than half of our private sector employees. These jobs are important, and in a time of economic uncertainty, they become even more critical to moving our country forward. Small businesses are playing an increasingly important role in the tech technological sector. S statistics uh, show that they are on the cutting edge of research, hiring 40 percent of all uh, technology employees, and generating 13 times more patents per employee than large firms. Small firms also lead our nation in trade. NAFTA and free trade agreements such as those with Chile, Singapore, and Peru boost prosperity, strengthen our ties with other nations, and create and support new jobs for America's workers. Almost one-third of all U.S. exports are generated by small business, and 97 percent of all U.S. exporters are small companies. Small businesses also create opportunities for every American. The Small Business Administration reports that the number of women, minority, and veteran-owned businesses is growing rapidly and co comprises an increasing percentage of our economy. These successes are impressive, but we must do all that we can to give small firms the tools to prosper. They need access to capital, counseling, and programs to help them build and expand their businesses. By supporting policies that keep taxes low, promote free trade, allow small businesses to pool together to purchase health insurance, and reduce frivolous lawsuits, we can help small companies to compete. Small businesses exemplify the American values of hard work, ingenuity, and achievement. And during Small Business Week, we honor small companies for their vital contributions to their communities and to our nation. Um, I also want to mention that uh, I am the ranking uh, member of the Antitrust uh, Task Force, and so we'll uh, have to leave here shortly, and we'll be uh, uh, ably substituted by either Steve King or Lynn Westmoreland or one of the other uh, distinguished members of the, the panel who will fill in until, uh, until I can get back. We're discussing a, an issue of, of some relevance uh, to our community in particular. Uh, it's the Delta Northwest uh, merger and Delta. We happen to be the second largest hub. And the, the chairman of the committee, uh, Mr. Conyers, is also uh, very interested in that particular uh, topic as well. Um, I, I try to be at these meetings from beginning to end as, as often as possible, but this is when I have to actually go over there. And one other detail I wanted to do was to introduce a young lady here who uh, is a, just a, she's a great, great young, young lady, and she happens to be the daughter uh, of my uh, staff uh, director, uh, Kevin Fitzpatrick, and her name is Elizabeth. She also happens to be my goddaughter. And uh, Elizabeth, you want to stand up uh, there so people can, can see you? She's also a champion swimmer, by the way, too. So. I know she'd love to sit through all the testimony and all the questioning, but I'm, I'm, I think she may have some other more interesting things to do at some point this morning, so she may, may move. Not that this is not terribly interesting, but uh, to a fourth grader, there's probably bigger and better things to see and watch. But watch did easier. you hear what she said to me when I said hello to her? No, I didn't. That when she grows up, she wants to be like me, a Democrat. <laughs> Now, Elizabeth, did you say that? <laughs> I think not, but <laughs> uh, in any event, um, thank you again, Madam Chairwoman, uh, for holding this hearing this morning, uh, despite that comment. Uh, we, look forward to, uh, we look forward to hearing from all the witnesses, and I yield back.